Hello, ladies and Germans. How are you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Hello, hello, hello. And we're back with some more of the PDX Steel Division Normandy 44 tourney. Mm -hmm. We're into uh, round two, isn't this right? Yep, this is uh, round two. Uh, oh, I was going to say, we are in St. Mary Glees as well, so we know this rather well, but go ahead, take, take it away for us. What, who do we have? Where do well, we have? On the left-hand side in blue, we have Eugen as the first Polish Army Division, and Nicholas Frick as a 352nd. As per usual, winner of this match will be heading off to the next round. Now, we just cast a game the other day um, with the Poles, and I mean, and we've been actually talking, and I'll say the same thing we said then. We've been seeing a lot of Poles, and that's just, that's totally surprising me. How do you think the yep. matchup's going to work right now with that 352nd? Well, in the town, it's it's kind of a toss-up, as uh, I know Poles do have, you know, decent amount of infantry, as well as flight support options. Mm -hmm. Well, 352nd can just, ha has the same thing, decent infantry of Ostrupen, and even fire support, such as uh, the Panjaeger, IG-18s, lots of artillery units, etc. It's going to be an interesting matchup, for sure, as this map really does play into both divisions' favour. And honestly, I'm, I'm really quite excited to see how this actually plays out. Uh... I guess I'm a little bit concerned about this. I know, I mean, I, we are seeing a ton of infantry on the pole side, and of course, the 352nd can definitely match that. But in between the two divisions, who takes that infantry fight? Um, I mean, my, my gut, immediately, at least anyway, says 352nd, as we get started here, but um, yeah. you, you might disagree with me. Go for it. Uh, if 352nd can get down that good old artillery game with the mortars, then he should be able to capture the town. Well, they're only bringing one mortar in right now, yeah. but we are seeing the Germans are taking a little bit more of a defensive stance. Is that mm -hmm. in recognition, you think, of the Poles, or...? Yes. Also, because you don't really have that much in terms of offensive units in a phase for 352nd's law. Also true. Anti-tank guns and, you know, Panzer Shreks, nothing really uh, too crazy in terms of, like, Panzer Three, Panzer Four rushes. I would say, although ironically, we do have a Shrek team, we do actually also have two pop guns, and we have that Panzer 35. Mm -hmm. But on the Polish side of things, I mean, we do have as well both a Staghound and a Cromwell, and the Staghound, yeah. shockingly, all that takes anything on the map right now for the Germans. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good unit to bring out. It's nice, it's cheap, it can deal with the infantry, and it can deal with the tanks, especially those Panjiegers and whatnot, if it can get close enough. Um, Stovepipe gets into action for the Germans as that Panzer 35 takes out the Universal Carrier. I mean, first kills, but big whoop, right? Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, uh, bring out the 120. It's definitely a good choice as, uh, well, in terms of its numbers, it brings out the big booms. And as you can see, it's pinning down the Polish infantry very effectively so far. So, okay, we are going to look like, it looks like the Poles are also trying to work the flanks. How do you feel about that? Do you think that Pack 38 is enough to stop, like, the Cromwell, for example? Uh, no. No, uh, no, Tom no, is outranging okay. it. As, True. Uh, is that outranging it right now? Uh, yes, just if barely. It is, just barely. Just barely. And, uh, I mean, that Cromwell on the flank, open field, gonna have a good time, really, especially considering there's not much. We do have a Panjaeger, which can stop it, but the Cromwell could somehow effectively stun up that Panjaeger, too, you also have to realize. But, um, I think the flank's really gonna be the pose best option, really, try to move around yeah, get the tanks rolling, and get into more open fields. Now, we were talking, uh, again, this goes back to our other cast, and guys, of course, if you haven't checked that out, uh, do. It was a nice little quick game from the Asia-Pacific region. But we were talking about how the Poles are very much a momentum-based um, division. How mm -hmm. does that match up with the 352nd's kind of uh, step-up offense? Yeah, uh, three two second. If they can get like a really good solid defense line down of MGs and pack guns, it can be a real pain in the butt to penetrate. But a Polish uh, trick up their sleeve really is their sextons, as a uh, really three fifty second can't outrange the sextons till C phase when it comes to artillery. Mm -hmm. And even then, SK 18s aren't great at counter battery and armored artillery units. True. While the Sexton can counter battery most of the 352nd stuff, including the mortar in the middle, and also deal with those pesky machine guns, pack guns, etc. Yet they can bring out. Sounds about right. Now we are gonna see the poles are getting forced back by, as you as you have correctly pointed out, 
the Czechs and the uh, oppressed Russians. Mm -hmm. And Barely I don't know. That town. Exactly, exactly. Well, this turned into a meat grinder is the question, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> in a word, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's always a meat grinder and there's a town involved. Especially when neither side really has decisive shock infantry in a phase. Now, we are going to see that decisive kind of infantry attack down to the south. Um, slowly starting to build here with the stag count in support. Is mm -hmm. this enough to overwhelm the German defenses? Yeah, for sure. One seem, I mean, that's a lot of riflemen. That's just a lot of bodies in general. Mm -hmm. And there was a stag count doing support. He should be able to clear a nice little path for him down south. Unless that Panjiega can uh, position itself to deal with that stag count. And it looks like uh, some more infantry is coming in as well to support that. Yeah. There's some more of Strupen. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, we're not going to see, I mean, a lot of necessarily fantastic. But it's still good. All Strupen are, uh, I mean, that's a solid 20 point unit. Oh, true. They do, they do beat out rifles at long range. I, I think, I think they do, yeah, because they're the MG34. Yeah. Even oh. even with the disheartened bonus. Well, and and honestly, frankly, they still match up pretty darn well with these Strupsy squads as well. I mean, the, yeah. the, that, that freaking Bren gun just does not do the damage needed to do. No, I mean, you, you really need, like, eight Bren guns to really make him useful. Indeed, and it looks like that Panzer Jaeger is going to get into action as we speak. But is this this defensive line you were talking about a few seconds ago? Is this a good enough defensive line? Uh, down south? Uh... Anywhere along the line, actually, because that, I mean, we are seeing a huge yeah. amount of a fur ball happening over here in the... right on the town square. Uh... I think town is going to hold pretty well just because we got artillery, but really it's just the uh, flanks at the moment. And if you can just knock out the tanks on the flanks, or deny them, as you see up north of the smoke play, mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful, yeah, and he should be able to hold the flanks until B phase, where you can start getting some pack 40s and stoogs and other accoutrements. Actual, actual good anti tank weaponry apart from pack 38s to. Uh, really deal with this. That is the wrong problem with 352nd, is you got, you know, the pop gun pack 38, and even in the Panjagas, you know, it's a nice little anti-tank unit, it only has 9 AP, which isn't the uh, best in the world, and it doesn't really uh, stack up where I want you again to be. True. True, though we do have a little bit of time before we do get over into B. We are going to see a mortar come down south, and I guess that is the A, the A, not the AT, but the RD you were talking about just a few seconds before. Yep. And we also got another mortar uh, north of the town, a bit 85mm. Yes. And uh, if Nicholas can uh, get the artillery game down and just, you know, stun up the infantry, especially down south, that's definitely going to clear things up. Just as long as there are no sections on the field. And we're just seeing blankets of smoke coming on out. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Panther Shrek is in the area. Stack up oh. might blunder into it. Oh, he is. Uh, so close. So close. That's like... Uh, that's a whisker away, man. That's like a maybe 50 meters. Here comes no aligning. And track's broken. I say hashtag. That's still pretty worth. Yep. Reloading. He does go down. But oh, that's... no. It hey, helped. immobility is fine. That pack 38 can still penetrate from that range. Yeah. And the side cannon's kind of low on ammunition now and doesn't have the best line of sight. So that's a, that's a good place to immobilize that uh, British slash American armored car. True. True, we are going to see another one being brought on into the north. This Cromwell, I mean, there's just... Where the Cromwells are, the Germans cannot be. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Ex especially in A-phase. It just has that anti... anti <laughs> the anti-anti-tank gun dominance. <laughs> um, at the same time, though, look at what remains for the Polish infantry in this town. I mean, we have just shreds of squads that are left. Half-strength mm -hmm. Streltsy. Um, Strelty with one model left. Oh no, there's there's one squad that's got eight troops in it. Other than that, yeah. nothing. Yeah, too bad he doesn't have any uh, other vice force or artillery to help him try and take his town, because that's really the problem, because these mortars, you know, the Strelty's get pinned down by the Ostrupen in a fight, and then the mortars effectively pin them, pin them down and make him worthless. Oh, Staghound gets forced to get a bailout. Oh, damn. That's a, that's a good good shot here yeah, from the Panjig on Pack 38 and knocking out those tanks and trying to stop the Polish from getting a, uh, you know, tank snowball effect is really a best bet. You know, 
is now another chrome rail and another chrome rail just on the uh, rest and side of the town now. That chrome rail six been there a bit a bit of time. The chrome rail five is just coming in right now, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, he, and he's making an end run over here as well. Oh my oh gosh, God. this is not going to go well. Like, I don't know, there's no AT nearby. Oh, sorry, that's exactly what I meant by that. Uh, Pack 38 does have a little bit of line of sight on that road, but they have to get awfully close for that to matter. Yeah. Shrek squad coming on in, some other attendant infantry, of course, with no AT. And I don't yeah. think that Staghound sees. Bricks, no, he sees it, never mind. The Grenadier Fuhrer in the patch down to the south. Now be a time for the Grenadier Fuhrer to pop some smoke, but uh, Nicholas is already doing it with his mortars. And yeah, Nick's been on point with the uh, smoke play this match, I have to say. Well, even better, too. He It just seems that Eugene is just freaking out. Oh my gosh, smoke, it's time to retreat. And he does so intelligently. There's a Shrek squad just waiting for that smoke to disappear. So brilliant mm -hmm. there. And especially considering that, you know, if you can't outrange the enemy, you might as well just block their line of sight so they can't outrange you to begin with. True. True. Like... Even even more proper. Yeah. Scouts getting into a wet noodle contest with the Grenadier Fuhrer. Yep. I was actually watching that and amazingly didn't unload his off a little bit sooner as he took some shots. I don't think he saw him, unfortunately. I think he, yeah. I think the uh, scouts were able to get out of line of sight on that. Yeah. So the Streltsy right now should be shifting on in, I think, literally into that smoke. But uh, they're going to keep their distance for the moment. But the main thing is Polis are getting that slow and lovely plus one point advantage with a 54% riches. A rather big deal. I do like up north front again with the smoke blocking that Cromwell's line of sight, really negating its effective use. And uh, the Poles are slowly starting to break through in the town a little bit. Yo, Panda 35 may be able to stop it of all things. I don't know about that. We are going to see your favorite vehicle in the world coming out for the Poles. Sexton? Yes, sir. Oh, Just coming to the west side of the town right now. And like you said, there is not much the Germans are going to be able to do to counter-battery this. No. No. I mean, it's getting a little bit too close for my liking. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where I brought it that close. Especially well, considering... I, I'm the... Go ahead, sorry. No, 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 please. I was, gonna, I was just going to just yeah. be cantankerous in objection, but go for it. Well, I understand, you know, you just want to have it close to the front line, but in this sort of setup, where you can easily outrange him by just having that section another 400, 600 meters back, you know, you might as well just have it back, yeah, so you, you can counter battery him, and they can't counter battery you. True, but I was thinking to myself at the same time, as we see more and more Austrian being poured on in, um... Maybe what he's looking to do is to reduce some of that shell fall, the 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 the, the malice to shell accuracy. I mean, the greater the farther away you shoot, the more inaccurate you're going to be. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe, just maybe, he's trying to get close enough to take care of that. Of course, as soon as I say that, what does he shoot at? He doesn't shoot near the front. No, sir. He shoots for the freaking pack thirty-eight. Yeah. Tries to knock out his AT gun so his uh, tanks can break through. True. True. Now, we have Kubelwagens coming on in just to the east of the town, and I might be wrong, but I don't think that that's not Austrupen. I think I might be Pioneers, Khan. That might be accurate. Yeah, that and that might and, be a good idea. Exactly. Exactly. Those guys with those yeah. natural charges are causing hell yeah. for everyone out there. Yeah. There's definitely the airsoft spam coming on through, as might be expected. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's usually, I uh, usually 50-50 where you see us at spam for uh, 350 stack, and it works pretty well because you get, like, one card with uh, 10 guys, which is pretty good bang for your buck. But uh, some people just negate it and maybe just get another card of Grenadiers. It's, uh... Yes, sir, no, the Pios. Those brave souls should be charging on in. Take out that Streltsy. Oh, gonna, he's, gonna, he's gonna reduce that. Get out. Oh, he, there we go. Yeah, there we oh, go. he's Look in. The, oh, man, that is aggressive. That is bloody nutty right there. <laughs> but here comes, okay, here's going to be a surrender. Which is going to really... Oh, never mind. Uh, wait. Oh, he's there, command, Grenadier Fury just barely has him there. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Poof. Got, got him on the lasso. Yeah, it ain't going to be no retreat. No step back down for the Pioneer. He, <laughs> trying to think about how to quote Star Fox for a second. <laughs> Do a barrel. I, I was worried for a moment. 
<laughs> I will not lie. I will not lie. I shot that frog down whenever I had the chance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't care if you made my stuff better. I shot that guy down. Yeah. Uh, we I, are going I, to I see. I always found that game hard when I was a kid. Yunker coming on in. Oh man, this guy's gonna have a beautiful shot Did over you go here. From Sexton? He's, yes, he is. Oh. He's got the gun run. He's aligning. Tracks broken. Ammo explosion. Yeah, That's a big loss. That's how you knock out the section there. Well, even yeah, if the Yoker goes down now because the hurricane, and he will probably go down. I don't know. I don't know. The AA unit is nearby. Oh my gosh. I didn't even. I, I, didn't even see, I wasn't even looking at the, the, the flak rear thing. Yeah. Yeah, mm. he's, he's that definitely going to get out. That's a big pick. Uh, Falling back, falling back. He goes down. Oh, that was so close. I think you just. I think that flag rolling just lost line of sight due to a build, and maybe for a brief second. But uh, it's definitely still cost efficient. I think just knocking out a Saxon is. Well, even important. if it's not cost efficient, that's just a beautiful opportunity. Of course, yeah. we are going to see howitzers being brought onto the field now. Bedford truck just coming in yeah. that center south portion. Yeah. And actually, it's nice. a twenty-five pounders in the north. I'm sorry, go for it. But the nice thing about the 25 pounders is you can actually counter battery um somewhere True. if you get in range. Now I'm a little surprised to see that from the German side we aren't going to see that artillery that you were talking about before. Yeah, no uh no neighbor office was a little bit sad because uh you know neighbor office town, I mean it's like bread and butter. True. True. Flak Veerling blows up spectacularly, and I even though we don't get a nice little close shot of that. It, this game again. We've been talking about this on cast, off cast. It's just it's so beautiful. Yeah, and that Chroma was in a lovely position because he's pretty much denying reinforcements into the town. Somewhere he only has limited line of sight on the road, but once you kind of get past the flanks here, Khan, and you can control that road, you control the town. True. Yeah. Um, I am surprised to see that this 120 mil has exactly two smoke rounds left, which is just uh, inspiring to a certain mean. Uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, how often do you see artillery units use up all their smoke munitions? Well, smoke and HE, for that matter. I know. He's been a busy boy at 120mm. <laughs> he has, indeed. Uh, but Polish Rush is coming towards that town. I, I don't think Frick has the lines to stop him at the moment. Oh, God. That is... Yeah, it's just going to be a lot of Strzokis rushing into the town. Surprise me, I haven't seen any uh, Dragoonies, which would be uh... pretty useful. They, they were. I think we had a couple of squats that early on, but they just they don't have the same kind of staying power. When against the Strelzi, I think isn't that just a better, more cost efficient option? Yeah, yeah, because it is. They they get more of them per card. I mean, more of them per squad, and mm. they kind of have roughly the same arm, and you just don't have the PR, and they're cheaper. But oh, I well, do like well, having. I do like having the half tracks. And against the three fifty second as well, you don't really need to have that that PR. No, and also they don't have, especially against Ostrup, and they don't really have much Panzerfaust capability, so, you know, rest on a half track or two definitely helps out a lot. That machine gun makes a big deal when flying against German MGs. True, actually, you were arguing from that way still. I thought you were arguing it from my side for a second. I was like, oh, okay, I see what he's getting at. Um, still, actually, Frick is running out of ammunition on every single one of his artillery pieces. His mortar to the south is, on, is completely Winchester. 120 mil is, is Winchester. There's one mortar that has munitions. Other than that, a lot of his troops are running low on munitions. Yeah, and there we got two 25 pounders on the field here, field here for Eugene, and they are just pinning down everything that he sees and denying Nicholas from getting into really any good positions. I mean, down south, it's just not good yet for Nick. Um, I, 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 this might be a dark humor kind of moment, but you do see that like, Grenadier Fuhrer in the town. Click on that Austrian squad just to the north of him. And if you're a town... He has yeah. now 75 rounds of machine gun ammo. Oh, then God. he has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, some, that's some Stalingrad stuff, right? Yeah. Yes, indeed. But he's Basically. fighting for the wrong side, comrades. Oh, yeah. There's no Pathos house. He... Oh, my gosh. I've actually never seen an infantry unit be completely out of ammunition on every single thing, unit. Like, every yeah. single weapon. That does not happen. That does not... I mean, that... And, and the Elstroop is still alive. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, okay. That, that's, that's even more true. I, I suppose I should have focused yeah. on that. And he's attacking with it now with no ammo. I mean, I, I fixed him by an Etchcon. Well, he, well, he can't take out that Streltsy unit if he can get to it, to the north northwest of him. 
No, he can't. Uh. He can't though, because he has no ammo. Like no. uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> too bad I don't simulate that. Well, no, but you rarely. If you, it'd be pretty funny if you could actually. Uh, oh, he got grenades, maybe. But that's only against vehicles. Never mind. No, no, but at the same time, you can do hand to hand when you go into buildings. You should be able to do hand to hand when you run into the open field, right? I don't think it works. Oh man, I'm 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 depressed I then. I know it'd be cool if you get like I, I don't know it's gonna a bit, it sound, it sound a little bit dumb, but you know get like troops like fixed bayonets and they do like a charge where they run fifty percent. Pretty much Bandai charges from Red Ultra Two is what I want. Well, that's when we bring the Japanese divisions in. Perfect. Yeah, you know. Perfect. Get there some, you go. Uh, Cannot be pinned. Get some uh, like knee mortars and uh, some mine grenades, and we're good to go. And hey, samurai swords. Those 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 uh knee mortars were no joke. No, especially, especially it's a bit off topic here. But if you've ever played a Red Orchestra two match, and the Japanese side has players who know how to use knee mortars, it's almost impossible to do anything effective. Because if you're in a position, you just get mm -hmm. knee mortared. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's yeah. practically close air, like not close air support. Wow, it's, <laughs> um, it's it's practically it's direct technically fire. Coming from the icon, so you're not, you're not so you're technically correct. You mean I'm, I'm not completely wrong, just mostly. Just uh, technically correct. Um, Facey in a couple of seconds here, yep. but uh, plus two is happening. It looks like Eugene is going to take this one pretty easily. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean that was practically direct fire. Those things were what a couple hundred rounds, maybe. Uh, excuse me, a couple hundred yards. Mm -hmm. Range. Like, those are not great distances here. No. But, uh. No. Massive Kai. strutty push. Wow. Yeah. What? And this is what I mean, uh, Polis guy. I mean, just, uh, look, Eugene. He has momentum. He has a lot of tanks in the field, a lot of infantry in the field, artillery on the field. And if you look at, uh, Nicholas, I mean, he has the Yank Panther, which is nice and all, but, uh, it's just one tank. Unfortunately, one tank doesn't save the day, usually. Not in this game, anyway. No, not in this game, no. If this was Men of War Squad 2, maybe bringing out a King Tiger could save your butt and run flank, but, uh... Not in this game. That is a tall order, nevertheless, though. Yeah. And then you lose the King Tiger because the dude of a flamethrower or a flamethrower is your engine and you blow up. Oh, exactly. And you just, and you just realize you spent 15 minutes saving up for it doing nothing and your whole team is mad. Um, I do have to make Good the note, times. by the way. You definitely know it's over when Eugene's bringing in the FU anti-air. Oh, yeah. Three of them. <laughs> Three of them. Not for yeah. any particular reason. He's not even really putting them in advanced positions. He's just kind of keeping them. Yeah. Just, just sort of. Postons. Actually, oh, he's actually just bringing out postons. Not even tripostons or, like, the Crusader. That's an interesting choice, because, uh... I wouldn't really deem those units effective unless you're playing 6 Airborne, because they have the veteran sheet. But look at, I mean, look at this right now. Um, we were talking about the the infantry matchup between the Streltsy and the Ostrupen, and we, mm -hmm. we, I don't want to say we had a definitive answer from this, but at the same time, I kind of, I can't help but wonder if the infantry had been present in equal numbers, would that have been a more even match? I think Nicholas has needed to use more CQC guys, because he could have got some Stormtroopers, and if he had his Pioneers and maybe some better positions and more of them in the town, he could have got some good, uh grenades off. True. But I think he just relied only on Ostrupen really in that town. And it can last you for a decent amount, but when they're out of ammo and <laughs> outnumbered, yeah, and yeah, you're gonna lose. Then they will run out of ammo. Yeah. And now just looking at it, it's a Sherman Mark V coming around the south flank of the town. Gonna be able to pretty much cut off reinforcements. There goes one squad. And, uh, yeah, we go. Yep. The last couple of seconds here, so congratulations to you, Jin. And, Nicholas, you've had, you've played a, a pretty good tournament so far, I won't lie, but, um... Wow. Wow. Polish Brigade. Well done. Yeah, they're, uh... There's the tap-out. There's the tap-out, and, uh, Eugene is taking the victory by, yeah, like a 900 a... kill death advantage. Yeah, and, and this goes back to the, oh, the other game, too, as well. I don't know, maybe I'm just having observational bias or blindness, but it never seems like the Germans are really taking that much of that much damage, I guess. In terms of uh, early on? Well, I mean, more or less later. I mean, early on, yeah, going the first eight minutes or so, it's about yeah. a two-to-one kill in favor of the Poles. Mm -hmm. But then later on, we don't really see a bunch of German deaths until about minute 15, and then another span from 18 to about 19. Yeah. 
I just think, <coughs> I just think, uh, like Nicholas, he he, it's just simple matter of momentum. The momentum on the flanks is really dominated by Eugene by having the tanks here mm -hmm. and really stopping Nick from doing any advances. And in the town, it just became that awful bloody meat grinder. And pretty much Eugene managed to out meat grind Nick. Well, I, I can't help but wonder if maybe Nicholas didn't apply enough units to the flanks early on. Yeah, at the same time, yo, when it comes to momentum on the flanks, he doesn't have like that much in terms of aggressive units, and especially against Pose, where he could, you know, rip out Cromrows, support Cromrows, Staghounds, Recon Sturich, Sturich. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really quite tough to uh, be aggressive on those flanks. Maybe down south where it's more forestry, mm -hmm. and try to maybe do some infantry anti-tank gun play to try and capture it. But uh, in the northern flank, I'm just thinking it wouldn't have gone well if he tried to attack here. Really defending it was his best bet. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Well, yep. Eugene now moves on to uh, round number three. Mm -hmm. Nicholas unfortunately goes home, and we're getting closer and closer to crowning ourselves a uh, a PDX tournament champion, aren't we? Another, what, another two rounds, I think, before we get to the semis? Um, I'm not entirely sure where we are overall think, in the bracket. Uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, like another round or two, and then we're into the semifinals. I think this tournament will probably be done sometime early January, in terms I'd of the uh, time frame. Definitely looking forward to the climax of it all. Yeah. But all right, uh, I think it's going to do it for me. How about you there, Rang? Yeah, I'm good. Sounds good. Folks, you all take it easy. Have yourselves a great day. This is Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.